hey, I, I don't know about you, but a lot of people, you know, really love parrots for not just their personality, but for their beautiful colors. And if you've noticed that your bird's feathers are not as colorful as they used to be, maybe they're kind of tattered and look like they've got worn spots on them or lines in them or just dull, um, then there's something you can do about that. This talk today is going to be about eight critical vitamins that you can feed your bird to help its feathers. Uh, get restored to that beautiful condition that you um, that you so much desire. So let me introduce myself first. I'm Diane Burroughs. I'm the CEO and founder of birdsupplies.com, which is a company that's dedicated to providing, uh, manufacturing and providing uh, parrot wellness supplies. So I, uh, I manufacture a range of uh, pet bird supplements uh, that support nutritional needs of birds, uh, as well as bird collars that help birds that are recovering from a surgery or or, uh, uh, actually have a feather plucking problem and then I have a range of educational materials to help you train your bird appropriately so that it can be the pet that you want it to be so today's talk is very important about you know how to provide your bird the proper nutrition that it needs to actually grow beautiful feathers I don't know if you've ever been to maybe a zoo exhibit or like Laura Park in the Canary Islands um, but you know, you see the most beautiful birds there that are just so colorful and healthy and a fit, if you will. And our birds can be like that too. Um, we just have to feed them correctly. And so that's uh, why it's so important to learn how to actually feed a bird. So I'm going to talk about you know these eight vitamins that, and nutrients that your bird needs, but also how to achieve an optimum bird diet and offer your bird some other basic care needs that it has in order for it to just maintain and grow the most beautiful feathers that you've ever seen. So let's jump into it. Now the first uh, vitamin I want to talk about is vitamin A. So vitamin A is full of benefits for our bodies as well as our bird. But did you know that it's key to growing uh, beautiful feathers as well? Well, here's what vitamin A does. It helps the skin produce an oil called sebum, which is a substance that keeps the skin moisturized and healthy, um, supple, if you will. And with that supple skin, the oil that, that, that is produced with, with each and every feather follicle that your bird has, and in its printing gland, uh, the vitamin A um, just allows the feathers to grow at a natural rate and feel comfortable and uh, for the skin to stay adequately moisturized. If the bird skin gets way too dry and, and the feather follicles get dried out, they don't grow beautiful feathers and it's, uh, it's very irritating. Um, if you've ever had dry skin, you know how uh, uncomfortable it can be. It's just, you know, you're miserable until you get it moisturized and our birds are, are the same. But vitamin A helps the skin actually maintain proper levels of moisturization. So some of the uh, produce that you can get at your local grocery store or even a farmer's market if you're lucky enough to have one nearby would be collard greens, uh, turnip greens, carrots, sweet red pepper, Swiss chard, spinach, and romaine lettuce. Those are all vitamin A rich foods. And since vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin, you know, if you use a supplement like our Feathered Up, which is like a multivitamin that's uh, geared toward feather growth, um, you have to follow the exact doses. But when you're feeding actual fresh produce, the body doesn't synthesize those in the same way. It actually synthesizes it very naturally so that if the bird eats too much, it just eliminates it next time it goes to the bathroom. So you don't even have to worry about feeding your bird too much. But what you have to worry about is feeding this range of different types of vitamins and nutrients. So the next uh, uh, nutrient class I'm going to talk about is the B vitamins. And you've probably heard of B vitamins. I mean, there's several different types of B vitamins. And they, are, they each serve a little bit different function. But one common factor that they all have is they play a very important role in the cell metabolism and the synthesis, synthesis of red blood cells. So... Um, uh, your bird needs those red blood cells to be uh, performing properly to transport different nutrients throughout its body and, um, you know, keep all the cells living and healthy. 
So uh, if your bird doesn't get enough of the B vitamins, then you're gonna notice its feathers are gonna look dull and they may even start falling out. Uh, biotin in particular is a B7. They also call it vitamin B or vitamin H for some reason, I'm not clear on that. But vitamin B is uh, biotin, it's a water soluble vitamin and so you can't overdose really on those uh, water soluble vitamins. They just, you know, go out when your bird goes to the bathroom if they get too much. But the uh, biotin actually kind of stimulates the metabolism to grow healthy um, feathers and um, uh, it also helps with providing the uh, fats and the carbohydrates that your um, bird needs. So there's six foods that I'll describe that are biotin and B vitamin rich. Sweet potatoes, again raw uncooked uh, sweet potatoes, my birds love them. Uh, they eat them almost like potato chips. Uh, legumes, um, soaked almonds, soaked sun safflower seeds and sunflower seeds, uh, bananas, and broccoli. Now the third class of, vi of uh, nutrients I'm going to talk about are the antioxidant vitamins, vitamin C and E. And these are essential for growing bird feathers and keeping the skin healthy. Um, so when you know about what you know about vitamins that are antioxidants is that they get kind of the toxins out of the system, if you will. So one thing that these antioxidant vitamins do for the feather follicles is they keep them healthy. Now, if you uh, um, you if you've ever heard of the feather follicle, that is the tubular structure that uh, is embedded in the skin and the bird's feather literally grows out of this structure. And each uh, feather follicle then has a complex system of like smooth muscles and tendons that surround it, which allow the bird um, to not only uh, grow the beautiful feathers, but they allow the skin to be uh, somewhat elastic and move around. And if you've ever seen your bird, how it can literally move its feathers, you know, in different directions throughout its body, whether it's flying or just fluffing up or communicating to you with different body language on how they move their feathers. Uh, the, that's some of the uh, functions that these uh, antioxidant vitamins provide. So you can feed your bird, again, some fresh uncooked produce like mangoes, kiwis, strawberries, black currants, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and potatoes to supply those antioxidants that it so desperately needs. Um, the next class that I'm going to talk about is vitamin D. And vitamin D, you may know, is not in very many plants, um, if any. It is in salmon and, and in uh, liver, but you know, birds are not <laughs> uh, eating those a lot. I don't even eat liver. I can't stand it. But I have to get vitamin D and so do our birds. And so there's three ways we can supply it to our birds. Now the first way is going to be to offer your bird natural sunshine. Um, as you know, we the sunshine allows our, our body to actually manufacture vitamin D. It's manufactured in the intestinal area. Um, so uh, providing your bird with sunshine is a great way to support vitamin D, maybe just 15 minutes a day. But not everybody lives in a warm climate where you feel comfortable taking your bird out for 15 minutes. Um, and you know, that's kind of a little time commitment as well. So some people will get a bird light. And bird lights are actually very similar to the reptile lights. You know, they provide those UVA, UVB light that uh, your bird needs. But uh, the important thing is they are designed so that they can be mounted on top of the cage. They work best when your bird is about two to three feet from the light source. Uh, but the other thing to consider with buying a dedicated bird light yeah, and probably maybe one of the most important things is that, you know, with a bird that has a beak that can crack open a nut, it can chew through an electric cord and electrocute itself pretty easily, pretty quickly. And so you need a light that actually has a protective feature of um, kind of stainless steel sheathing around the electric cord. Uh, to prevent that kind of accident from happening. Now, the other way to provide your bird nutrients of vitamin D would be to get a complete calcium uh, supplement like our, our uh, bird calcium, magnesium, and vitamin D. So this uh, uh, is a nutritional supplement that provides not only the uh, calcium, but the magnesium and the D3 because all three of those work together to actually synthesize calcium throughout the system. So if you just give vitamin D, you know, it's great, but 
for some things, but it's not going to help your bird uh, achieve the appropriate cal levels of calcium that it needs. And you know, calcium is the most abundant body in, or um, mineral in the body. And so you need to have a complete mixture if you're going to ensure that your bird's getting um, appropriate calcium. Uh, but uh, the important thing is that this uh, nutrient here does have that vitamin D in it. You would just put it in the water three times a week. Uh, Calcium is one of those vitamins or those nutrients that you can overdose on. And so it's really important um, that you just follow the directions on the given uh, bird-based uh, calcium supplement that you choose. Now the next uh, nutrient that I'm going to talk about is zinc. So zinc is essential in the body, but we only need trace or minor sources of it, if you will. So zinc helps maintain the health of the oil glands surrounding your bird's feather follicles, the beak area, uh, its claws, and also uh, a lot of birds have a preening gland, which allows them to spread the oil all over their feathers and um, uh, skin so that the skin stays moisturized, the feathers stay moisturized, but also so that it provides a, um, a waterproofing resource so that our birds who are from you know rainforesty jungle type areas that get lots of rain, uh, that oil provides kind of waterproofing so that they don't get soaked to the skin and get chilled. Um, but zinc is just really super important in uh, maintaining, uh, you know, not only uh, feather health and growth, but also, um, you know, uh, um, keeping the feathers intact and, and without adequate zinc, the feathers have been known to fall out. So there's several different kinds of uh, produce that you can feed your bird to supply it with those necessary zinc uh, nutrients. Asparagus, corn, broccoli, wheat germ, oats, and uh, brown rice in particular. Uh, iron is also a necessary um, uh, nutrient that your bird needs. Yeah. If you've ever looked at your bird when it's growing in feathers, um, it's got a vein in the middle of each feather down the shaft as it's growing. Now once the feather's done growing and it's fully mature, then that vein recedes. But the vein is actually supplying blood that's transporting nutrients and uh, different things that are essential for feather growth uh, as the feather's growing. So, you know, think about the feather just growing a little bit at a time. That, that pin feather is just supplying um, uh, these nutritional resources as it's growing. And so if you've ever seen your bird and it's got kind of like a line through its feather, we call that a stress bar. That's when maybe the bird got stressed out and it wasn't, uh, it's, it, it abrupted the, um, interrupted I mean the uh, feather growth at that stage. And it, and you can literally see how tattered the feather is in that particular area. Now, some of the uh, produce that you can get iron in include beans and lentils, baked potatoes, cashews, and dark leafy greens like spinach and such. Uh, molting birds are going to need um, amino acids as well. Amino acids are actually like the uh, key building blocks to proteins. So feathers contain about 90% of protein. Uh, that's a lot of protein. So each and every feather, you know, has a lot of carotene in it, as well as other substances. And um, if, without these amino acids and proteins, your bird's feathers are just going to be very deficient looking. They're going to be dull. Uh, they're going to be um, compromised and might fall apart easily and um, just, you know, not be healthy. And so, um, making sure that your molting bird or your feather plucking bird is getting, you know, the needed essential fatty acids and the proteins is really important. And this is where a high protein diet comes in during the molting season. And that's one of the things about this uh, Feathered Up is that it does provide those proteins and amino acids that your bird so desperately needs. But if you want to offer you, uh, this resources from uh, fresh natural uh, substances, consider give, feeding your bird cooked eggs, uh, properly cooked legumes, um, pine nuts, almonds, cashews, and walnuts. Those all provide the amino acids and, and fatty acids that your bird needs to grow you know, healthy, beautiful feathers. Now, if you want kind of a um, printout or a free infographic on how to supply these various nutrients, head over to that blog post because you'll be able to uh, get a uh, printout that you can put on, or you can print right out on uh, your computer and it'll show you how much of what you need uh, 
to feed your bird and the essential diet that you need to feed your bird. So essentially what it's going to consist of is about 40% of your bird's diet needs to be a nice premium pellet. Something that's been researched for birds like a Harrison's or a Rowdy Bush or even Topps uh, bird food. 40% of the diet at least needs to be a these um, really nice uh, research backed bird pellets. The other 60% needs to be the raw, uncooked, plant based produce and nuts and herbs and flowers, fruits that I've talked about. And so that's explained in this infographic. Now, uh, one way that you can provide a lot of uh, nutritional importance to your bird's body is by using what we call adaptogen herbs. Adaptogen herbs are actually herbs that not only provide nutritional resources, but also have a calming element in them. So, you know, we're talking herbs like chamomile, lavender, red clover, and that kind of stuff. And uh, one great resource for the adaptogen herbs is going to be um, this bird uh, tea here. It's got seven different kind of herbs. And when I'm making my birds chop in the morning, I'll put about a tablespoon of this in to um, feed my four birds uh, in with their chop and mix it up. And that way they're getting, you know, even more nutritional resources, plant-based resources to support their uh, feather health as well as their entire physical health. Now there's a couple of other things that you can do to support your bird's feather condition and feather growth. And um, you know, one of the things that you need to think about is giving your bird frequent baths. Now I'm not talking about baths with shampoo or anything. I'm just talking about freshwater baths if your bird is pretty healthy or doesn't have real dry skin. Um, you know, you can get a shower purge or a misting bottle and give it daily baths in the wild near the equator. You know, those are rainforest type regions and they, and they rain frequently throughout the day, every day. And so birds are used to, our birds are actually kind of wired to have a daily baths to clean their skin and get all the debris off of it. Uh, but also when a bird gets a good bath, a good soaking, then it helps the bird to know how to preen appropriately so that they're realigning their feathers to keep them looking really beautiful. Another thing you can do to support your bird's beautiful feather growth is to offer it appropriate levels of sleep. So being near the equator, our parrots, you know, these rainforests and, and jungles are often right pretty close to the equator where the amount of daylight and darkness is pretty compatible. You know, make, you know, it doesn't vary as much as it does in our northern climates. And so our birds are actually kind of wired to need 10 to 12 hours of sleep, uninterrupted sleep at night. We're talking quiet, no uh, access to like LED lights from TVs or anything like that. And if you can't provide your bird, like I say, a dedicated bird room, you might want to consider getting a sleep cage where you could cover it and give your bird that uninterrupted sleep that it needs. Another way to help your bird um, have beautiful feathers is to keep it busy during the day as much as possible and encourage it to exercise. So a lot of people will use like uh, play stands and open door policy with their uh, cage if they have a dedicated bird room. You could just roll a play stand up by the cage and uh, develop like put different perches around, put foraging stations around that encourage your bird to explore around the cage and, and exercise and, and play around a lot. And this will not only keep its mind exercised and busy, but it'll also keep its body moving so that it's keeping all those muscles and stuff in shape that have to support, that are right underneath the skin and actually support the feather follicles as well. And finally, the stress reduction is huge. And that was another reason why I brought up the adaptogen herbs is that birds are so susceptible to stress. Our birds are exotic animals and they have kind of exotic care needs like this ridiculous amount of 10 to 12 hours of sleep and, you know, the exercise and the super healthy diet. Um, and so uh, with that said, if they don't get all their needs met, they just, you know, get all uh, anxious and nervous with the stress and it comes out oftentimes in feather destructive behaviors as well as other behavioral uh, issues like screaming and biting and aggression or you know being overly hormonal and so providing your bird with stress reduction exercise of course helps and so does proper sleep and proper nutrition but these adaptogen herbs that actually have calming properties in them uh, are another great way to help your bird just you know feel comfortable in a domestic living environment and to adapt to you know living in a home as opposed to you know um, 
you know, natural life of the bird would be in the rainforest and what have you. So I hope that helps you out, you know, in learning how to feed your bird appropriately. Uh, make sure that you head over to the blog post and print out that free resource of the diet because it is so essential, not just for physical health, but for your bird's feather health as well. So uh, I hope you liked the video. If you liked it, you know.